Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the news behind the news with Ralph Cantava on Mix 94.7 FM. And I hope that you guys have been having a great day so far this afternoon. I am definitely glad to have the gentleman who is here before me. And before I introduce him, I just want to say that, you know, um, it is for me, it, it is definitely important that we continue to, uh, you know, highlight, like I said, real people, real stories on, on our island. There's, there's so much that's going on indeed. But um, I, I think, you know, by showcasing the various talents and skills and professionals we have, you know, it, it helps us to see the variations and possibilities that exist that, that um, hey, we can get into. You know, you're never too old to learn something new. But also um, for our youth, for our young people, you know, that they can see uh, the different industries or professions that exist on the island and, 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 uh, and the possibilities for even new, newer ones um, through, you know, the skills and knowledge of those who currently exist. And so today, one of the young professionals I have here with me um, is Mr. Elvis Harrigan, um, the Elvis Harrigan. <laughs> good afternoon, and thanks for good being day, on the program. Good day. How's everything? All's well, man. All right. So, appreciate you coming through. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Uh, the name, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, a bell ringer. Um, but, you know, maybe there are just three people who don't know who you are. <laughs> so, could you tell us a bit about your background? And, and also, uh, what led to you deciding to pick up a camera? Okay, so once again, my name is Elvis Harrigan. Um, most people know me by that name, or just Elvis, or the guy with the camera, or the photographer, however you want to associate it. Um, so more or less, where it all started was probably in high school, um, I was mainly interested in graphic design. And of course, with graphic design, you mainly work with photos and, I mean, different elements, but mainly photos. Um, I actually used to work along with my cousin. He used to give me different projects to do, whether it's create flyers or cut out images so he can finish projects that he's working on as well. Um, and a lot of times, searching for you know, um, common products that you can use in images or faces or whatever, you couldn't find the exact picture that you were looking for online or it wasn't at the right angle or whatever the case is. Um, so we used to sometimes take our own pictures. Mm. And one day um, he let me use his camera. And I was like, wow, how, how are you getting the images to pop out of the the screen like that way, how, how is it blurred like that in the background and what's not. Um, so he let me play with the camera for a little bit. And I think it was a Christmas that I spent in Anguilla. Um, my task was to take photos of the family where they, where they open the gifts and different stuff like that. And I think it was at that moment I decided, okay, Photography seems interesting. It seems like something that I would have fun doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's more or less where the passion came from or the interest then. Mm -hmm. um, also on Facebook, I had a lot of different friends who had already begun doing photography for fun, different events. Um, it was one of my good friends in Angola, Kirai. I saw some images of that he took at a... We were tracking Nevis, and he had put some HDR filters and what's not on the pictures, which I didn't know anything about then. So I figured it came just like that from the camera, you know. So I started asking questions like, how you get a work, how, why the images look like that, like mm -hmm. 3D, and, you know. So he gave me a little breakdown on, okay, he has this camera, and he used this software to edit the pictures and make them have the effect they have. Mm -hmm. and so from there, um, on my birthday, my family gifted me the same camera that my cousin allowed me to use. Wow. And That must have been touching. I know, right? Mm -hmm. So it was the 1st of January 2010. So I got the gift on my birthday, which is the 31st of December. The 1st of January, I started using it for our own family gathering, taking pictures of the different cousins and the food, the ambiance and what's not. 
and that's where it really started for me with okay, photography yeah. yeah okay because yeah i did see uh you share that in one of your posts uh the three guys who help you out yeah and then um seeing some of the like uh, valia Vela, yeah and, Ve- um, and Vela, Vela. i know how exactly i think it was Vela, yeah. yeah and then um lily lily Back as well used times. to take pictures for teen times i yeah. used to see it in the papers and so a lot of people would think that i was one of the younger ones who started it but no yeah, yeah i met i met people doing it before i came here correct correct yeah. Yeah, that's cool man um yeah, because I think the interesting thing too is, I guess you also use those skills you develop with graphic design into yeah, exactly your photography. And yeah. do you still do graphics? Um, not really. I would do it like for myself personally oh. if I wanted to create business flyers or whatever. Um, but not for hire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but you did. When, I think you went to France. Was it France or? It was in France. Yeah, yeah I did a a nine months course. So it's actually. Two years worth of school in a nine months crash course. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that was in, in media and so forth. It was mainly in graphic design, but we had um some photography cl- courses in it as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then from there you realize I could do it on my own. Yeah. So, so from you didn't after want to just get them the, the graphic design <clears throat> diploma and everything. Um coming back to St. Martin, I was like, I really don't believe graphic design would help me mm-hmm. um, just because you know you could go online and buy flares for like five dollars and then alter them yourself mm-hmm. um, and then when as a graphic designer if you come you say okay i'm charging you 150 dollars for a flare it's like yeah but i could do that myself mm-hmm. <laughs> you know i mean with pictures too you could get really good quality with your phones but it ain't high quality as with yeah, professional a, a cameras. Professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like uh, I guess there's this current debate even with using can- Canva right now. Mm-hmm. But you know, um, and I guess it, it it depends on the the purpose. You yeah, know, I mean, things... Canva. I I used to knock it first, um, but, but I have yeah, a friend. It's been a great help. I have I a friend say. that use it, and I think it does what it needs to do mm-hmm. for like. The Instagrams and the WhatsApps and you know yep. for that so uh, sure. market. Yeah. Um. So I would I I mean like I said I used to knock it but it helped me you know, in all in my yeah. business so. Yeah. So I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. Uh, now one of the things that I'm pretty sure has definitely changed is uh, even the technology part. You mm-hmm. know, as far as um the the quality the the well, let's say quality the the makeup of the camera like when you just started to know. Mm. Um, so how much of a leap has it been, would you say, in, you know, the new, uh, additions to, you know, whether it's camera, the editing software and so forth? So where cameras are concerned, um, I think it come a very long way because as a child, um, I think at that moment it was mostly film. So film photography, um, which is something that I, I would like more knowledge in. Because a lot of photographers are now reverting back to film photography. Yeah. I mean, it just have a different feel to the image. You have this vintage look, the the green and everything. A story. Like yeah. A very um, much storytelling base. So from there, you went now to the digital age where you can see your pictures as soon as you take it rather than having to take it. You're not sure how it's coming out. You have to develop it and, you know. So now you can take the picture, review it. If it's too bright or too dark, you could adjust it right away um, and just take the perfect picture. Um, So when I started photography, it was DSLR cameras. Um, So it was still kind of like you have to take the picture first and then review it to see if it's good or what's not. Now we have mirrorless cameras where before you take the picture, you can already already adjust the settings, have an idea of what your image is going to look like before you take it. Okay, and so that's a huge difference between that's the DSLR. That's a huge difference between the, the DSLR mirror. and now the, the, the mirrorless. Mirrorless, yeah. mirrorless lens. Okay. So I guess in a sense you save more time because now you have to do less test shots in order gotcha. to get the perfect shot. So now you could set it 
and forget it. In a sense that increases your productivity. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now, when you came back from France, uh, what was your mindset like then, you know, having realized you have a knack for this thing, um, you know, you definitely look forward to expanding yourself and mm -hmm. growing, um, you know, what was your approach to betting on yourself, just going all in? Um, okay, how was so that like, building a personal brand? When I came back from France, mm -hmm. I was, I was kind of discouraged being back to Martin because I wanted you know to get some experience outside before I came back. But because the job hunting and searching in Europe was so difficult, I mean you have millions of people that are kinda of applying for the same jobs. And I was looking for work in graph in the graphic design field. Yeah. And you definitely got a lot of um, yeah. So after I mean I'd finished school and probably Three to four months I was looking for work and I kind of ran out of patience, <laughs> waiting for calls and that type of stuff. I say, okay, I'm going to go back home and start my own business. When I got here, my parents was like, um, you know, you should apply for a job, get a job, um, and do what you like to do on the uh, weekends. On the side, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, that wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. Because for me, if I did that, I would get comfortable in a job mm -hmm. and I would probably put my passion aside. Mm -hmm. So I while in Europe, I used to do photography on the side, like with my friends, um, do photo shoots, make, you know, earn some small money to buy groceries and stuff. <laughs> to get by. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so when I came back, it was, you know, get a job. You could do it on the weekends. But that's, I ain't sure that I'm going to have weekends off if I get a job, you know. Um, so I went against my parents' advice. You know, you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I decided to go full-time into photography. Um, it was hard. Because at the time, like I said, had other people already doing photography here. So you're breaking. So why breaking? Trying to break ground. You know why would people choose <clears throat> me? So this is two years later after, after getting a camera in 2010. Yeah. Um, in 2012, I came back to St. Martin and decided to hit it full force. Mm. So how was that period of trial and error and? What led to you answering that very same question you just asked? Why would people choose you? Why Elvis and not whoever else? So basically, after getting, you know, started in 2010, I used that entire year um, to gain knowledge, uh, do research, um, practice, fail, practice again. So I would wake up on several days and just take pictures of like flowers mm -hmm. objects just to understand how the different settings on the camera work i would take a flashlight and shine it on the object see where the shadows fall take a picture see how you know different try different things just um that with a mixture of watching youtube reading different blogs um, that really helped me to gain, like, the knowledge without having to go to school, gain the knowledge of photography. Um, yeah, it's, I, by, it's, so, it's so long, I don't even know what to say, but mm -hmm. all of that, all of that so helped I, me to... You did a lot of deep work. Like, yeah, uh, so, like, a lot of mm -hmm. grown work before mm -hmm. putting myself out. So I had at least three months just taking pictures of weird stuff before trying to contact anybody and say, Hey, I'm a photographer. To say, okay, I'm going to charge service. you yeah. whether it's twenty four dollars, whether it's fifty dollars to take pictures of you mm -hmm. and you're gonna like it and <laughs> you know call me back another time and take pictures. Yeah. So no, I, I I get what you're saying. Um uh, gives me a, the well the perfect example comes to mind. Mm. Um it goes back to childhood, Dragon Ball Z, mm -hmm. with a hyperbolic chamber. You know, when Goku would have those um, those huge fights, um, but in order to prep himself, you just go in a hyperbolic chamber, which would, you know, give and him that time. Exactly. Practice, yeah. <laughs> so that by time, yeah, yeah. he out of chamber, 
You know, he ready, he ready to, for he, his fate. He ready to brawl. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. You so take that I time to... Mm-hmm. Family, getting up early in the morning, 5 o'clock, catch the sunset, and just take random pictures and see what I get. Reach back home, excited, put them on the computer, add some effects to it. At the time, I thought I was doing a great job. <laughs> When I look back at those, so that's why, like, I have I have those pictures on Facebook still. Yeah. Like my very first set of sets of pictures. Um, many times I said I'm gonna delete them so people don't see that stage. No, but that's a big. That's but a big for me, story. it's like okay, people need to see where you came from. Yes. And then, where you reach, you know. Yeah. So for that year, 2010, it was a lot of trial and error, mm-hmm. failure too. Um, and when I got to like the middle of 2010, mm-hmm. I had people coming to me and like, yo, you got this dude out there looking for you, looking for me for what? I don't have no problem with nobody. What are you looking for me for? And I was like, no, uh, my guy, Jose Williams, he looking for you. He, he just take pictures too. I said, okay, cool. I knew him because we were from the same area, which is French Quarter. Um, so I looked for him, found him, and he was like, yo, I just see why I just be looking at your work on Facebook. I really like what you're doing. I just take pictures. We could work together. I mean, I have a job, but on weekends we could link up and, you know, do different stuff, try different stuff. Mm. So that's where me and his bond came from. And that gave, I'm sure that gave you a boost because that you gave have me somebody a boost more senior. Because both of us had similar interests. Mm-hmm. Um, our styles were similar. The thing yeah, that we sure. wanted to shoot was more or less the same. Um, so he used to come to me because he knew I could, I have um, knowledge in Photoshop and the software is needed to edit these photos. Mm-hmm. So he, his purpose of having me around was so, so I could give him tips on what to do in Photoshop, how to use it. And for me, having him around was an extra eye in photography to, okay, so try this and then mm-hmm. try that, you know. Um, so from that, he became like a big brother to me, uh, my best friend even. Um, we used to buy material together. The first, one of my first um, light modifiers came from him, cause he had so he had a job, which means he had money. Mm-hmm. I had my camera and I was broke, <laughs> <laughs> so he used to buy material, um, flashes, um, gadgets, mm-hmm. and he would say, "Well, I buy this, you use it, test it out, see how it is." You know, so I always used to borrow his stuff to work. And one day he was like, bro, I'm going to show you some tough love right now. I ain't allowing you to use my things anymore. Because if you continue to use my stuff, you're going to never buy stuff on your own. I had feel bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. And right after he said it, he was like, but I buy you this. And that was, like, really touching for me because, like, outside of family, nobody really do nothing like that for me, you know? Um, So after that day, that was a major lesson for me, you know? So you have to invest in yourself. That's basically what he was telling me. You have to, you're going to make your money, but don't just Splurge. splurge and spend your money on having a good time or whatever put back money into what will make you money, you know? Mm-hmm. So from then is when I started to stock up on equipment, buy stuff that I don't necessarily need, you know, that, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, I love that you said that because you, you really went into my next question, mm-hmm. which is the fact that, you know, being a business is not easy, especially when you're starting out in uh, the more unconventional parts of business. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's say, you know, photography. It's, for example, what was a good example? You know, for example, let's say you decide to open a, a, a tire center. Mm-hmm. You don't see man got bad words, roads. So it's like, you're kind of bound to get business, right? Yeah, but yeah, photography yeah. is maybe iffy. I guess it, it, it may seem so. Like, if somebody has an event, if somebody make birthday or passport mm-hmm. photo and the like. Um, 
But from from the beginning, you had that mindset of, I want to work for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm betting on myself. I know I'm good. I can make it, despite mm-hmm. experiencing some difficulties in the beginning. Yeah. So having fully adopted that business business mindset, uh, what was it like even um, in for you defining your pricing, um, but also marketing yourself? Pricing, because, yeah. pricing is still a problem, to be honest, um, because you don't want to feel like you're overcharging people. Um, and if people feel like they're being overcharged, then naturally they run. Um, so it was it was kind of difficult trying to decide what I would charge people to take their pictures. Um, so it was a lot of back and forth with that is concerned. And you don't um, want undercharge either. You don't want undercharge <laughs> neither. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think I started at probably $50. Um, and we are in a market that don't necessarily understand how important photography is compared to Europe and the U.S. Where, where we charge maybe $200 here for, they will charge 6 7 and mm-hmm. higher. Mm-hmm. Um, and get back less than what we give on, on the island. Um, but like I said, we, we're in a smaller market, so we can't really... Price yourself out. Price yourself out and try to compare to the U.S. and that type of thing. Um, where marketing is concerned, the way I put myself out there is going to every event it had. Yeah, that's true. Yes, everywhere. <laughs> every event it had that was, I guess, free mm-hmm. for entry. I was there, I would take pictures, and two days later, post the pictures on Facebook. People looking for themselves, yeah, 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 self, yeah. Or ask who the who the dude was, or taking pictures, and you know. So that's the way I got myself out there by just going to different events, taking pictures and posing them online, slapping my logo on it, and just having people come to the. And you created that yourself too. The logo, the first one I had, yes, the. Second one, no. Um, I used a graphic designer to do it, but somebody who had more experience than me, gotcha. especially in that field. But I was the one to decide that I, how I wanted it to look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. So looking at that, you know, you 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 grow on tremendously. Um, so, so 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 from you know if being that events the starting phase with um Willie uh, Mr Williams and all mm. of that, uh you ended up getting your own studio uh was, was nearby from to here actually um, not a so mistake. actually the f- my first studio space was in French Culture oh um where you have Red Eye Crew Studio okay yeah the the recording studio yeah, so how that fun. happened was. Mm-hmm. During my time in France, I had internship that I had to do. Um, and of course, I had missed home, so I decided to do the internship here in St. Martin. I came here for, a f- I think, two months, two or three months. And in that time, I met with Skelet. Skelet reached out to me because they wanted photos for their to promote their music. So they wanted to do group photos, individual photos, and stuff like that. Uh, we set up a studio in his home. I took pictures of the crew, but one was missing. One was in France, where I was. Um, so I took fit pictures of Skelet and two of his brothers here in mm-hmm. St. Martin. And when I was going back to France, he said, I have a brother up there. I need you to get his photos as well. So when I got back to France, rented a studio, took his pictures and sent it back. But while I was here, during the, we had, I had a conversation with Skelet. And he was like, yo, you're going to be good now. In photography, you're going to be good. And whenever you come back to Martin, we're going to walk. When France come back, hit him up, he was like, I was like, yo, I come in to cash in that, that, that chip. <laughs> they had a very small space, but he was like, yo, this is all I have. It was about maybe a six foot wide space. Um, he said, this is what I have. You could use it the way I have to do. 
and um, see what happened. So at that time, I ordered papers that was four foot wide, four feet wide, to shoot groups of people, where there is four or five people. And of course, they were falling off the background. Mm-hmm. So I had to use you no know, my graphic design skills to make everything <laughs> look seamless and whatnot. Yeah. So that little studio space is actually what launched uh, Elvis Harrigan as the the photographer. Yeah. You know, e. so yeah. while people recording music, you're having other people coming in to do photo shoots, just booting up and people, yeah, you know, it, it was crazy. Yeah. I think I have videos and everything of that period still. Um, they may drop a genius like Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got comfortable there, um, but I knew I wanted much more. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I reached out to, I think, you know, Peter G. Yeah. He, he has connections with everything and everybody. So I hit him up. I was like, yo, I, um, I need space i need to create a studio big enough to shoot families to shoot product to shoot whatever i need and be comfortable and that's where the space over at the bowling alley came from Mm, okay so we're gonna take a quick break and then we get back on that welcome back everyone you're tuned into the news behind the news of ralph cantava mix 94.7 fm and I am joined with E. Harrigan, uh, Mr. Picture This. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, so as we last spoke about, um, yeah, you decided to, you know, continue, your continued growth, mm-hmm. um, again, that iconic studio in, in Manhattan State. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it like also in setting it up and, and getting all your equipment and the layout and, and, and all of that? Yeah, so once um, Peter J. let me know that what he had available then, uh, when he when he showed me the space and I walked and it was huge. It was much more than I needed. Um, so I was like, "Yo, in here, too big." He was like, "Too big? Why is too big?" He said, "You're gonna be one of the biggest photographers on the island. You need space. I give you space." He said, "If you want, just use half of it. The other half." I gonna create whatever I have to do, but this is what I have for you. I said, okay. I accepted the challenge, even the amount of stairs I had to walk. Yeah, that's a lot of stairs. Yeah, a lot of stairs indeed. Yeah, so <laughs> once good exercise. I, I looked at it, okay, I see. I asked myself, why well, I need to start earning money now? Um, I needed the backdrop, the big, long backdrop. Mm-hmm. I needed lights. And I needed a chair to sit on and edit, a chair and a desk. So that's what I started with. I got the backdrop. The first thing I ordered was the backdrop. Got it, set it up. I didn't have a chair or anything yet. Once I set it up, asked the model to come, test it out, perfect. Um, start marketing. I have a studio now. I don't mm-hmm. have nowhere for you to sit on, mm-hmm. but I have a studio. Mm-hmm. Um so again, every every job I got, I reinvested it in the company. Buy chairs, buy table, buy more equipment, buy lights. So eventually it got to the point where the space that was too much was enough now mm-hmm. um, for me to use one side for one color background, the other side for another to store stuff. So... You know, um, so it's, again, looking at it at the first time, it was like too much is much more than I need. Mm-hmm. And then it turned into I can enough. Have fun with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, we were, I wasn't alone there. Um, so between the time of moving from French Cool Sack to Madame Estate, um, Cameron Hyman, which is, Another top photographer on the island had reached out to me on Facebook when he just started mm-hmm. and was like, yo, um, I'm doing photography too. Um, I would 
like to shadow you when I come down to St. Martin. So basically go on shoots with you, see what you do, understand, assist. you know, mm -hmm. assist and mm -hmm. what's not. So I used to give him tips too on how to take better pictures, how to set your camera to get sharper images and what's not. So eventually both of us was in that studio space, just creating, um, sharpening the tools that we the, have in... The Canon Boys era. The Canon Boys era. Yeah. Um, and I remember eventually, same way you used to be everywhere, both of y'all used to be yeah. at every event, etc. So yeah. India, is where the, India is really where the monsters were created. And um, us doing photography and me, um, I used that time to try a lot of different things, a lot of new methods, you know, just do whatever comes to mind and hopefully is a hit and not a miss. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't there for too long, thanks to Irma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2017 came. Did you have any equipment damage? A lot. Mm. Um for the so preparing for the storm, I, I always have my camera on me, my computer on me. Um, a lot of the equipment was too big to fit in cars, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever could have fold up or put in fit a in a car, put mm -hmm. in a bag mm -hmm. or whatever is what I took with me, mm -hmm. which is mainly the lights and lights, everything yeah. else, um, soft box and stuff that could fold. Everything else I left there, like. A people, <laughs> like a lot of equipment still remained in the furniture, studio, and yeah, furniture, everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and figured the storm would come, you're going to pass, I'm going to go back, set up, start to work. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, after the storm, the place was kind of locked tight for a while. And when I did get access to the place, everything was, the entire building was... I don't I didn't even know how to explain, but that moment was heartbroken for me. Mm -hmm. Um because now I have nothing. That that was my my thinking. I have nothing left to do anything I want to do. So I was in a, a little depression because now I really gonna have to find a job, you know? Um, yeah, all these years of yeah. Just tightening your belt and going out, yeah, going it alone. Yeah. So after the hurricane, I was home, open around. Um and my wife was like, What wrong with you? I said, How you mean? I ain't got I can't walk, I ain't got nothing. She said, Will you start taking pictures in a studio? On the streets, on the road, on the beach, everywhere I see outdoors and stuff. She said, Well, Go outdoors. Go back outside. <laughs> um, Shout out to Sav. And yeah, so I linked up with Stacey Ann. She was very um, instrumental in the growth as well because she was a makeup artist, stylist, model. She used to come up with concepts for us to shoot and what's not. So after that time, she hit us up, hit me up. She was like, yo, um, let's shoot. I said, but how are we going to shoot the place in a mess? You don't got nowhere to go. She said, well, let's go in the mess and shoot. So we went outdoor. We did a shoot with all the debris all over the place. And then again, back the motivation to, okay, I said, this could work. Mm. You know? Um, so in a sense, it's like, well, you know, having a studio is indeed, was a, was a success. Yeah. It's all for a comfort zone. But the if, studio was convenient for everybody. Yeah. You don't have the sun to deal with. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the weather. You know, you could shoot your covered. You're good. You yeah. got AC, you got Wi Fi, everything. I, I think it's the great thing is, like, when we were talking off air, you don't start at the top. And so, because you know what it's like to start from scratch, mm -hmm. uh, while it's challenging, it's nothing to have to revert back to. Mm -mm. You know, dealing with the hot sun, yeah. traffic maybe, and, and all of that to get the work done. Exactly. So after getting back that motivation to go back and shoot and, you know, continue business, um, I was called by the people at the Miss Lally Commercial Center 
and I think their building was newly completed. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, uh, we have space here, you know, um, for the stuff that you want to do. Um, this is how much it costs. And I was like, bye. I can't spend that kind of money now because of the hurricane and mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. So I continued looking around for different spaces and found nothing and still had to go back to the original plan. And when I recontacted them, they were like, okay, the space we are offering already gone. <laughs> but we have more expensive units. <laughs> you know, <laughs> So it was like, okay, I just shoot myself in the foot. Um, looked at the space, knew it was too much. Again, well, not the space wasn't too much, but it, it was too expensive for me. Uh-huh. Um, but I was a type of person that was never afraid of a challenge. Uh-huh. Um, I spoke to my dad. I said, um, "This is what was presented to me. I don't know what to do." Um, he said, "Well." Do what you feel is right. I'm here to help. Um, got a small loan from my dad. Made a deposit. I say in two months' time, I'm going to give back your money. He said, give me back half. The other half is a gift. Nice. Did what I had to do. Got the space. And again, I had to start from scratch. So <clears throat> I think that time, it was 2018, Carnival time, the Calypsonians, whoever was in charge of the, the Calypso shows at the time, contacted me and they were like, yeah, we have X amount of people um, and we need pictures. I don't have a studio set up as yet, but I was like, okay, cool. Same day, jump on Amazon, order what I needed to order. I have an empty room. Mm-hmm. I have a picture of that empty room with... I think more than 10 people standing up inside waiting to take pictures. Wow. Again, just an empty room, a backdrop in my lights. Hmm. The, chair, from, the, chair, the chair wasn't even there. From there is where it started. <laughs> Back again. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first thing about this time was after the, the paper, of course, was yeah. a chair. <laughs> so I would go in this empty studio, sit down and think. Look out the window, sit down, think. How are we going to do this? What, mm. what, how... How we're gonna set back up everything, mm-hmm. and it was the same thing. We back revert back to the old tricks. Every dollar you make, take some, put it back out of equipment, and now you have picture this studio since two thousand eighteen. Yeah, great yeah. man. Yes, yeah, sorry, I mean so in tune to really, story. I, <laughs> yeah. The whole story with picture this too was because first I used to operate as E Harrigan Photos. Mm-hmm. Um. And after the hurricane, I had a lot of time to think because I couldn't go nowhere. And I was like, I need to change the name from it being so personal gotcha. um, to something a bit more broad. Because I was thinking if I have employees or whatever, I don't want for people to feel like... Yeah, but you ain't Elvis. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I was like, I need something fun to switch over to. Went through a lot of different names, and picture this was the one that stuck. And yeah, yeah I have a lot of people to thank for the creation of picture this too. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably won't have enough time to go through it now, but I mean, on Facebook, whoever does look at the post, they're gonna know. But Lario is one, um, he was the one to create the logo that I have for picture this. Gotcha. Um, he too took um, a chance because he used to live in St. Thomas mm. and he basically quit his job to come and you know tag team with me and you know people like that you gotta it's quite appreciate a, quite a know? risk yeah indeed uh, yeah. yeah that's great but I, I guess uh, the good thing too uh, you offer that leadership factor where people see that what you do you stick to and you know the, the the end result is of quality, mm-hmm. and that that speaks of um, yeah the legacy you're creating. Yeah. So um, I'm curious about something about your beginning, but even now, mm-hmm. as far as 
um, what elements have you settled with? You know, like in an accent in the sense of you know you have people who let's say specifically do pictures of dogs mm -hmm. or babies and families. Um, what would you, would you classify yourself as someone who just appreciates va variations of photography or yeah? You know, what what is your favorite um, element or specific type of photography? I am mostly into fashion photography and weddings, um, but I more or less do everything just because bills need to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I am most passionate for fashion photography because with that you have no barriers. You don't necessarily have any barriers. You can do whatever you want, however you feel. You know, um, so those weddings and fashion is mostly what I cater to. Um, but I touch a little bit of everything, kids, funerals, events, <laughs> different birthdays. events, birthdays. The birthday thing is really popular. Um, yeah. So much so I kind of sometimes get tired of seeing balloons. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um but yeah but do you so and do you do you push well not necessarily push but um do you solely accept the creative idea of um a client or you know do you give recommendations like uh, your, so your when people to come that? to me i try to i like when they have an in, initial idea of what they want um and then i try to help them fine tune it and put something together you know sometimes people come to with no idea at all and you know i have people now that i can um recommend them speak to you know to get different ideas going because um sometimes there's a lot for me want to deal with um and i like to bring up the people around me you know i like to expose the people that are that i work with that are around me gotcha. so i mean as of late i work closely with the walkers events um she brings a lot of um great concepts to the table um like i said stacy ann as well she has like a really creative mindset yeah um i've worked in the past as well with um always enchanted mm. for balloon arrangements a lot of I've, I've worked with a lot of people that has really great ideas and so far everything has been and you really, say and you yeah. say that's also part of part of your networking or marketing as well in you know building those connections mm -hmm. too yeah so um you know you mentioned uh, thinking about like the change with picture this um how do you handle your, your workload and and where do you see yourself in you know uh, uh, a trainee uh, and so forth you know, um i would on. i would really like to have somebody that you know i could train or whatever to help where the editing and everything's concerned but it's kind of difficult to do so um because i have my way of editing or i have a way that i like my finished products um and to train somebody to do exactly what you do is kind of, I mean, it's risky mm -hmm. because you don't want somebody to just run away with everything you taught them and then put you out of business or whatever. I mean, I ain't, I ain't going to be here forever. Somebody going to naturally take over. Um but yeah, I've kind of, I've been through some stuff that kind of have me reluctant to do certain things. Um, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't mind working with, I've, I've done a, a workshop with some students um, with the White and Yellow Cross. They had a project uh -huh. where I had to teach a group of children how to use the cameras, or the basic use of cameras and photography. Um, you think that was so, mm -hmm. that was cool. Um, so you think you'll be probably that's doing something? That's those? something I plan to do 
some more photography like, workshops. Yeah, workshops yeah. with maybe not with a group because it's hard. Uh, I don't know how teachers do it, <laughs> but hard to get ten people to focus. Well, I guess with small groups then maybe. Yeah, uh, so smaller groups maybe one on ones. You know yeah. that that type of thing. Five or six might be a sweet spot. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's not too many people. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. So, um, one of the things I noticed going through your Instagram feed is over the years your photography has evolved from bright, saturated shots to more you know darker, experimental yeah. lighting, uh, more use of black and white photography. Mm-hmm. So, where do you see a style evolving? Evolving to next in terms of composition, lighting, and so forth. I don't even know. Because um, with my personal page, my E. Harrigan Photos page, mm-hmm. I I have the liberty to do what I want, to try what I want, um, to create even a new look. I could do that with my personal stuff, you know. And then with the business page, I try to keep it a bit more safe. Uniform. Uniform, well lit. Um, I mean, if if a client comes and this is something that they want, like creative lighting, what's not, then that sends me crazy because now I have the liberty to do what I want to do for you, you know. So I mean, on the business page, you would find I guess one or two creative, dark looking. I like I like I like a lot of contrasty shots um, for me to tell a different story than. Having a perfect picture, you know, like mm. polished and looking good. Sometimes there's two sides to a story. So one side look so that's that's how I operate with like with my lighting. So like one side shows you um the perfection and what's not and then on the other in the image the other half would show you maybe struggle or whatever, you know. Gotcha. I have some stuff that I'm working on right now too. Um some creative stuff that I want to get out. Um, hopefully, people gonna like and appreciate what I got coming for them. Cool. Yeah. So, are are you planning on uh, making a switch over to film? Uh, I'll try. Only I say that I say it like that because right now I have a lot of a lot of work. The workload is heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try not to. I don't have enough time to really discover new things, um, but I would really like to get into film. And okay, so I remember last year you previewed the XXM Bike Life on on you know a project. Mm-hmm. Uh, when will that be revealed? Um. So with that, honestly, we have we have um. What we wanted to do actually, because right now Cameron is doing um cinematography. Mm-hmm. Um so that's why I reached out to him to also help him where that is concerned to develop his skill where with film, with movie making then. Mm-hmm. Um what we wanted to do didn't actually happen. So that's why it kinda taken a, a a little minute to come out. Um, but I told them that we're going to just have to use what we have and put it out because the time for it passed because when, when we did it, it was a really hot topic on the island. Um, well, it's one that tends to circle back. Yeah. So, so (laughs) yeah, I, I can't give you an exact answer as to when it's going to come out. Um, but we're working on it. Okay. But I guess then what what was um the key thing that led you to do it um besides the incidents that took place, but mm-hmm. you know, your thoughts on, on bike safety, because I know you you are also part of Yeah. Uh, you know um, you're a bike as well. The idea to do it came because like you say, it had a lot of different incidents that happened on the island with with bikes. Um and you all you always only hear the side of the person's, let's say the person's driving the car that come in contact with the bikes. Um, you always hear the opinions of the people on Facebook who are against the bikes. You may hear some opinions from people who are for the bikes, but you never really hear from the persons on the bikes. And so happened, I know a lot of these people personally, and... 
I went in, I went to his home or their homes, and I was like, I need for I you to put I voices out. I need for I you to explain I yourself. I need for y'all to explain to people why you do what you do the way you do it. I say it ain't necessarily that you're wrong. It ain't necessarily that you're right. But you have to explain yourself, you know. So that's what we did. We went to them, and and you got a cooperation. Yeah, okay. yeah. So what I wanted to do originally was to get the opinions from the bikers, specifically the bikers, yeah. Uh, from the everyday motorists who encounter these bikers, and then maybe somebody from law enforcement. Yeah. Gotcha. No, but that's that's a, that's a, that's still a great project idea. Yeah. Um, because that that can then develop into other 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 stuff, other stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. So once one when we launched the teaser, a lot of people were excited about it. We got a lot of positive feedback. Even the bikers were like, "Yo, when the rest of it coming out, you know, is." Yeah. Know. Yeah, because it's controversial. Um, but in a sense of, you know, one of the main question you ask as a motorist, mm. specifically um, in a vehicle is why do the stunts, you know, on oncoming traffic yeah. and, and, and the like. So so it, it would be good to see that project yeah. for, for sure. And Trey so, put some pepper on it, get it outside. Yeah. So uh, we just have a few minutes left, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, even as you, you're pushing the boundaries with, with your creativity, um, where do you get your inspiration for coming up with con- concepts? Uh, mainly Instagram. Um, so, you know, you have people that look up to a lot of different photographers. Well, in photography, um, you would look, you would expect people to look up to famous photographers who are world renowned or whatever and what's not. For me personally, I was never that guy. I was always more interested in following the people that I could actually speak to. So when I say that, I mean, like, you have photographers, like, I'm going to use Jose Williams. If I see he posts something that I like, I can reach out to him and be like, bro, how you come up with that? And get a response. Um, You have Richard Monroe in Trinidad. I call him my mentor because even from Trinidad, he used to, help me with my photography, give me tips, give me stuff to look at. You know, so I like, I, I, I look at my circle and get inspired by what they do and how I can do something similar or something close to it but still different. I mean, I still see work from other famous photographers in Africa, America, around the islands or what's not. Um... So yeah, Instagram is where I get gotcha. most of my inspiration Insta. from. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's nothing that is there's no photo that has never been taken. There's only remixes and you know your own touch to it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so looking at also you know I guess a transition I would say that you also made you. You so like you share that you you definitely love the fashion photography mm-hmm. and the wedding. So would you say that um, you know the more sensual undertones in some of the photos? That's also a shift that 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 you intentionally make, like to yeah. Um, and like and I guess I would say what like what about that? You know, te- I guess what's your angle with capturing that? Um, you know, to to either tell a story or you know. Um, you're talking about the more, um, sensual stuff? Yeah. Uh, so with that is, is the same thing where, you know, playing it safe. Um, a lot of people like to see well-dressed and well-polished. And then you have some people that are interested in the more sexy look. Um, for a while, uh, even now, still, a lot of people frown on sexy. Um, but there's a difference between sexy and ranchy. Mm. Um, a lot of people expose um, ranchy pictures 
and I think it has discouraged, you know, people that want to model, like models who are interested in that type of photos, like they would hold back because of the they criticism. Would be, they would be yeah. labeled. Yeah, they yeah. would be labeled, I guess, nasty or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. So when I when I do pictures like that, I try to, you know, at least do it very tastefully um, to avoid them being ridiculed or criticized. You know, so I have some images on my Instagram with that could be probably nude or close to nude or whatever. And even when their parents see it, they like, oh, this is nice. You don't have on much clothes, but this is nice. Um, I think I have one with a, a girl I worked with. She lives in Holland, and she has on like a chocolate brown silk material or whatever on a chair. And when she told her mother, yeah, this is what I do, her mother was like, you're crazy, you can't be doing pictures, of that. you know? And then when she saw it, she was like, oh, okay, this nice, you know? Um, so I try, I try to be very careful with the way I, 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 I take certain sensitive pictures just so um, the model or models can be um, safe in a way. I got you. You know, because sometimes... You know, you have girls that like to post pictures in bathing suits and whatever, and then when they go out down the road, they get disrespected, and, you know, so I just try to, when taking my pictures, I just try to have them in mind still, you know, to keep them out of harm's way. Got you. Um, after Irma, I decided that I don't want any computers in my house anymore. So once the doors are locked, I no longer walking. Because mm. I would be home, I would be sleeping, I would, let's say, I wake up 2 o'clock in the morning, can't go back to sleep, I would jump on my computer, it's edit out. pictures, mm-hmm. and, you know, so, now I actually get to sleep at night <laughs> without um, thinking about work, necessarily. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good, man. Keep work at work, and home for home. That's right. Cool. And I'm pretty sure the wife is also PS4 excited with you know? that, too. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. All right, man. So I would like to uh, thank you so much, Elvis, for coming through. Um, this was definitely thanks for the invite for putting me under so much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So to our viewers and listeners, thank you guys as well for tuning in, and be sure to tune in again tomorrow. So when somebody gonna interview you? Hmm. You could do it. <laughs> Good All question, right. though. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care. All right.